Other than trig substitutions, I have one last technique for integration to cover today. The techniques in the last week have mostly been about types of functions. Integration by parts for products, partial fractions for rational functions, trig substitutions for sums and differences under square roots. This last technique is less about one specific type of function and more about limits and asymptotes. I want to be able to consider integrals where either the domain is infinite or the function has an asymptote at one or both ends of the domain of integration. Such integrals are called improper integrals. Improper is perhaps a bit unfair, but they are unusual because to try and calculate them directly would involve using infinity in the calculations. Arithmetic with infinity is indeed improper, so some other technique is needed. The general idea is to use limits. The edge of the domain of integration is where the problems are for these integrals. Therefore, I'll integrate over a smaller domain where there are no problems, but then take the limit as the edge of the domain approaches the problem. This limit may or may not exist, so the improper integral itself may or may not even have an answer. If the limit exists, if it has an answer, it is called a convergent improper integral, and otherwise it is called divergent. So say I want to integrate the square root of x from 0 to 2. Most of this is domain is fine, but there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. If I tried to do this integral normally, to calculate the area under the curve, I would end up with, with infinity as one of the endpoint values, and that's not acceptable. So instead of integrating all the way to 0 where the problem is, I integrate from a to 2 where a is some small positive number, and then I take the limit as a approaches 0 from the positive side. This integral I can do. This is just inverse power rule, and the antiderivative is 2 root x. Well, then I can evaluate on the bounds, which gives 2 root 2 minus 2 root a. Then I can take the limit as a goes to 0, and I simply get 2 root 2. Here is the graph of this function. It shoots up to infinity as it gets closer to the y-axis. But what the improper integral says is that even though the value of the function is going to infinity, the area under the curve is actually finite. This is a strange thing, but it is possible. The function has an infinitely tall spike, but it is so close to the axis that the area still adds up to only a finite number. Strange, but valid. Here is another example. This one doesn't have a vertical asymptote, but instead it has an infinite domain of integration. I want the area under this curve all the way to out to infinity on the domain. I do this the same as before. I integrate from 1 to a, which is valid, and then I take the limit as a goes to infinity. The antiderivative here is another inverse power rule, leading to negative 1 over x, and evaluated from 1 to a, this is just negative 1 over a plus 1. And the limit of this, as a goes to infinity, is just 1. Here is the graph of this function. I want the area of this function as I go all the way out to infinity, and you can see that the function gets very, very small. The improper integral tells me that even though the domain is infinite, this area still only adds up to one single unit squared, even going all the way out to infinity. The integral converges, the area is finite. Here is one more integral, very much like the last, but this time 1 over x instead of 1 over x squared. The setup is the same, I integrate from 1 to a and take the limit as a goes to infinity. The antiderivative is now the logarithm, so I get the limit of ln a as a goes to infinity, and this limit is infinity, so this improper integral diverges. The area under this curve is not finite, but adds up to an amount larger than any finite value. Here are these two graphs drawn together, 1 over x squared and 1 over x. Both of these decay, so both of the functions are getting smaller, and the pieces of area that I have to add up are getting narrower and narrower. What the improper integral tells me is that 1 over x squared gets small fast enough that the lighter shade of area here, going all the way out to infinity, is finite. But 1 over x does not decay fast enough, so the darker shade of area here, going out all the way to infinity, is actually an infinite amount of area. It's strange, but this is what the integral tells me. Both of the previous integrals were 1 over x to some power, 1 or 2. I can generalize this. For 1 over x to the p, the indefinite integral converges whenever p is 1 or less.
sorry, diverges. And when P is greater than one, I can do this in general with the limit and the antiderivative and the evaluation limit, and the result is one over P minus one. So as long as P is even slightly larger than one, the area under the curve is finite, and the larger P is, the smaller the area is, which makes some sense since a larger power in the denominator leads to a function that will decay faster. Calculating improper integrals involves limits. Sometimes those are easy limits and sometimes those are difficult. One thing that helps for these kind of limits is comparison. There are some direct comparisons. For example, if f and g are both positive and f is larger than g, then the integral of f must be larger than the integral of g. Therefore, if g diverges, the larger f must also diverge, and if f converges, then the smaller g must also converge. Direct comparison has some use and value, but the most useful comparison is asymptotic comparison. The key idea is this. The convergence of an improper integral is determined by the asymptotic order. I calculated that 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity converges. Therefore, 1 over 4 plus x plus 18x squared integrated from 1 to infinity also converges. This less than infinity notation is pretty common shorthand for convergence of improper integrals. The values of these two integrals are not equal, but their convergence behavior is the same. Knowing that that only the asymptotic order matters can make determining convergence much easier, since a much simpler function can be produced to calculate the limit.